Most woodworkers get started building tables and an end table is the perfect project no matter what your skill level is. So this is Three Levels Modern End Tables. I'm Lou and I've been woodworking for a little over 12 months. I'm Chris, I've been woodworking for three years. I'm John and I've been a professional woodworker for the better part of a decade. For my project, I'm building a super basic end table from construction grade lumber. I'm keeping it super simple, only using one 2x4 and one project panel for the entire build. I'm going to be using very basic tools that you can find in pretty much any garage. This project costs less than 50 bucks to build, and it should only take you about two to four hours. For my version, I'll be building a solid oak base with a plywood veneered top. For the drawer box, I'll be doing a pretty simple technique with plywood, and then I'll be making a drawer face that's solid oak to match the veneer top. And to construct it, I'll be using pretty normal woodworking tools that anybody will have available to them in a woodworking shop. This project should cost anywhere between $300 to $500, depending on material availability. This build should take you roughly two to three days. My table is going to be completely built out of solid walnut. We're doing a custom base with a waterfall box for the top. The drawer box itself is going to have some hand cut dovetails and then I'm going to try something completely new to me for the drawer front and we're going to do an integral drawer pull out of solid wood. Walnut's expensive so this project is probably going to cost you close to $750 or so. I was able to get this built in about four days total which means you should probably get it done in two to three weekends. For the top of my table, I'm using a project panel I got at Home Depot. That way I don't have to mill anything, I don't have to glue anything up, it's already done. And for DIY, this is great because it saves a lot of time and you don't need a lot of tools for it. So I'm breaking down my hardwood so it's rough length. That way it just makes it easier for me to mill. I'm not trying to mill up a 10 foot long board. It's just easier to get through the planer and the joiner. I should be able to get the entire top and both sides out of this single board here, which will give me some really nice grain match. And then I'll make the bottom panel that you're not really gonna see out of this second board here. So I'll rough cut these up, plain joint and glue up some panels. Alrighty, so I just got done milling up my panels. Now I'm going to glue them together. I marked them out so that way I know the orientation. So that'll be one leg, got the panels over there for the other leg. I'm just gonna throw them in parallel clamps, get them glued up, and then later I'll be able to continue with the project. <laughs> Why does it look so much like chocolate milk? Because it is. Some xanthan gum and some chocolate milk. And I've been gluing boards up like that for years and nobody's figured me out. This one is probably gonna make it into the house. It should look pretty good with the um, cookie coffee table that I destroyed Jordan in the build off with. You know, those high-end designers, everything's mismatched. Before I break down the materials for the top, I'm gonna lay this out with some basic tools. Tape measure, pencil, framing square. If you want a more detailed description of the plans, they're down in the link below. I cut both of these big, so now that I can clamp them together and get a perfect cut and make them the exact same size so they mirror each other. Now I need an 18 by five and a half. I need two of those. And we're gonna go back to the table saw. The reason I didn't do that for the other ones is because you never want to cross cut something that's shorter than the length. It gets too squirrely. So I just pulled out my panels out of glue up, but now I need to start breaking down my plywood into the parts I need to start building my box. I'm gonna start assembling the box and then I can start getting ready to veneer it. Actually, I have to face frame it first. So I gotta start milling that after I get this assembled. So I got my panels down to size. I like to leave them a little heavy and then bring them through the wide belt for final thickness. So we are perfectly one inch on these suckers. I need a 20 inch center piece and then two seven inch pieces on each side. All right, so I'm gonna set up a jig to cut the 45s here. I'm gonna bury my blade in this fence. It'll give me a perfect 45 since I already cut them square. tip before we glue this thing up we are going to be finishing it with rubio therefore i got all the interiors sanded down nice to 150 grit that way we don't have to do it after the fact most of us build boxes and forget to do so so there's your tip now let's get some glue in there So I've got my stock here that I'll be milling up and cutting to make my face frame and then attach my face frame. Once that dries, then I'll be adding my veneer over it to cover up everything and making it look nice and pretty. 
Now it's okay if it's a little oversized. What I'm just really trying to do is make sure that the miters are nice and tight and that it's covering the whole plywood edge because I'm going to go back anyway with the router and flush trim it with the plywood. That way, you know, it's fitting perfectly before I put my veneer on. We're just gonna put this together with some basic pocket holes and we're not gonna use any plugs because the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna put the pocket holes on the inside where you'd have to get way down low to see it and it'll look great. Now that we're done with the top, I'm gonna work on the base. So I'm gonna grab these two by fours, I'm gonna cross cut them with a circular saw to make everything more manageable. Now that I've cut my 16s, I'm gonna cut my 13 inch pieces. Then I'm gonna put everything on the table saw to get everything nice and square. And then we're gonna pocket hole everything and before we glue up and then put one side together and then the other side and then attach them both with the in-between pieces. So yeah, it goes like this. So for my base, we're gonna be milling down some stock and then building the uh, two parts out of a template that we cut on the CNC here. If you're looking to build this yourself, We'll provide the template in the plan. We need to make two of these. So to make my stuff complicated, we're gonna do a 65 degree angle. You can't see this, but we'll pop that graphic up right here. I've got everything marked out. We're doing lap joints. That will then look something close to this as I get it all done. We've gotta cut these before we shape them. So I've got one shot, so if I don't screw it up, Missed my lines, made a little boo-boo, so I had to remake it. But even the pros make mistakes. Now everything's lined up, we're all dry fit. What I'm gonna do now to make this a little bit easier after glue up is trace my template onto the cross member here, and then I'll rough cut that out. I'll come back with a router after everything's dry and actually fasten this template to it to get that perfectly clean. But I'm gonna do that for both parts, and that way, like I said, a little bit easier to do after the fact, removing bulk of that material. So for the legs, I went ahead and cut the dados to hold the shelf piece, cut everything down to final width and length, and I'm about to glue everything up and get it ready for finish. We are getting closer. So this is gonna sit down on top of these. So I'm gonna recess these down slightly. It's gonna be easier to do when I could take these apart than it is gonna be when I can't, so that's the next step. I gotta remove the material, and this is pretty awkward, but what I'm gonna do is called a stop cut. It's hard to see here, but I have to cut this block out on this side, and I've gotta do it on all of them. They don't all match up the same direction. So two of them are gonna get cut from one side of the table saw, and two of them are gonna get cut from the other. So because of my saw tilt, I actually can't make this cut on the table saw, nor can I um, finish the cut on this guy uh, so I could uh, use the band saw to finish this cut and I got a new blade in there and it's cutting pretty good but I think I'm just going to finish them all by hand and try to refine them uh, with some other tools. Moment of truth. Oh, Alright so now that I have all these parts roughed out and everything shaped and fits together, a little glue up, uh, I guess this is stage two. So last thing I need to do with my base before sanding and adding the finish is rounding over that top edge. My base parts are dry, so now we're gonna uh, actually run the template on them uh, in order to clean everything up, hit it with a round over, and then we'll glue it all back together so it's actually a base. And then we'll get to working on the drawer box. You guys are doing a drawer? All right, so to build my drawer box, all I did was took some plywood, cut it down to size, I edge banded the top so it looked nice and pretty, and then I cut a dado groove to accept the bottom panel and then assembled it all together with some pocket hole screws. I cut some parts down and now we're gonna make our drawer boxes. I'm gonna make dovetails for mine. What's a dovetail? Oh, dovetails. He's using bird parts? <laughs> all right, so for my dovetails, I'm gonna use a, 
a hybrid method, more or less. Yeah, it's a hybrid. I've got a custom ground table saw blade that's ground to seven degrees. So I'm gonna set my table to seven degrees. Then I'm gonna use that to cut all of my tails. I'll then reference those by hand and then show you how I'm gonna cut them out over at the other workbench. But this allows me to only measure once Cut everything all glued together like this. It makes my tail cutting perfect and really, really fast. 60 seconds. All right, I'm cleaning these up real quick and then we'll get on to cutting all the tails. <clears throat> get a box roughed together, cover all my ends with blue tape. So I do my dovetails using what I call the Mike Pekovich method, which requires a lot of blue tape and I can mark where all of my pins are gonna live. I'll come back through and I'll peel off as I'm looking at it, the parts I know I'm gonna be cutting out. Someday I'll do like an in-depth tutorial on all this, I think. Japanese pull saw, and then I cheat it up with the Cat's Moses dove dovetail jig. The six in one is a seven degree angle and works perfect for this. So bring my saw down and I'm gonna start cutting down to my line. Beautiful. I'm then gonna remove majority of the waste staying above my cut line. Now that that's cut, I have the opportunity to come back with my piece and check based on my orientation if my piece fits. And look at that, perfect, right off the saw. Last thing I do to get that tail, I have a ball bearing bit set to the depth of my material that matches perfectly with my cut line. I just turn on my router and I'll follow those interior paths. Clean that up a little bit because the radius on the router bit doesn't get those back corners. That, my friends, is how I build. <clears throat> dovetails. So I'm going to do the rest of the box and then we will uh, get the bottom put in and get this thing in glue. So for my drawer front I kept it real simple, used a piece of white oak, cut out the drawer pull on the bandsaw and then just did a chamfer around the edge. So for my drawer front I've prepped some stock and I've got two pieces. Um, this is going to be my test run and what we're going for here is a Jory Brigham inspired integral drawer pull for the front. To do that, we have to do some crazy table saw stuff. This is called a coat cut. Start with your blade pretty much buried into the table. I've got like nothing coming up here. Um, so we're gonna start there. And what I'm gonna do is try to get something like this cut into this piece of wood here. So this thing's looking awesome, like I said. I think I wanna do a more pronounced handle. We're just gonna do something here, like this. So I just measured these in and I took the radius here. Should be pretty sweet, let's go. Ah. Well, great news, we're coming in further. Lean into your mistakes and make them a part of the design. Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. Different attack this time. I like it. If you take a step back, super cool, huh? So almost all my parts are done. I gotta get everything started to get glued up now. And I'm gonna throw a couple screws in here for support. The next step will be to put some screws in from the bottom up into the bottom panel, from these top pieces here into the bottom panel. And then once that's done, I can make it look pretty. So all my joints are, some are perfect, some are not perfect. Come on, man. Luckily it doesn't matter because we have to sand everything and it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to look perfect. On to finish. So first we're gonna tack cloth it to get all the dust off of it and then that way it looks good when we put on this early American stain. After we let it dry overnight, we're gonna put on this water-based polyacrylic and this thing is gonna look as good as it's gonna get. 
wipe it on, you come back, you wipe it off later. A lot of wax on, wax off Miyagi stuff going on right now. So I got everything disassembled, uh, which for the finish that I'm using, which is Rubio Monocoat, is kind of key. We're going to finish it in parts and then I will put it back together. Um, so I'm just using their cleaner and the Rubio Pure. We'll wipe this thing on. It will literally breathe brand new life into it. It'll look absolutely incredible. And it goes really quick and fast, which is why I love this finish. The last thing to note about me using Monoco Rubio here is that this table is gonna get a lot of use because it's going in my house. And because of that, I want an easy way to repair it. And there's nothing easier than working with Rubio Monocoat, in my opinion, for home repairs. So that's just another reason it's going on this piece of furniture. And it looks great on walnut. So let's get to finishing. The one thing I wanted to point out is, see how it didn't stain here that well? Like over here, it took a, the stain a lot better. The end grain is always gonna take the stain better, but here it didn't. And that's because the glue squeezed out and got into some of these pores. You can be cleaner with your glue up. You can sand a lot more, but I didn't want to do that because then it would leave a divot. I think if we put that side up against the wall, it'll look great. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. I'm actually really happy with this. This looks awesome. Cue the B-roll. These things turned out awesome and were a ton of fun. I am pumped to have three levels back. Let me know which one's your favorite. And also let me know, what are we gonna build next?